Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. Today I wanted to give you an update on my 2020 locality boa breeding trials. So I think we're getting pretty close to having some baby boas on the ground, hopefully another week or two or maybe three weeks, and we'll have some babies. It's always great to finally have some babies after all these many months of pairing up boas. I think I have several that are looking pretty gravid at this point. I have a few females that are kind of iffy, they may be, and at least one of my pairings this year I don't think is going to result in any babies. I'm also going to say a little bit about uh, acquiring some of my baby boas, as a number of you have expressed some interest in this. So I just want to, at the end of the video, I'll go over my policies. And remember, if you're interested in acquiring a boa or looking into how my boa breeding is going, make sure you subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for regular updates as well as videos on different topics of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. Let's take a quick look at my females right now. So first I want to take a look at my Hog Isle female. And I think this Hog Island is probably going to be the first litter that I have for 2020. She hasn't really been moving around very much. She just kind of coils up. You can see her, she's uh, looking pretty big. Definitely gravid. Hopefully we got some nice babies cooking up in there. Uh, she's been moving back and forth between the hot spot and the cool side of the cage. Though my snake room has been pretty toasty lately. So, you know, the background temperature the cool side is in the low 80s or so. So in the cage, it's been about 84 or so on the cool side lately. Um, I think she may give birth in as little as about a week or so. Probably the beginning of July, based on her post-ovulation shed. So we'll have to see. Uh, but she should provide some beautiful babies. She had, uh, I think it was nine babies two years ago, her first litter. Very beautiful, all pure Sears bloodline babies from Vin Russo. Um, but just a gorgeous Hog Island boa. So here's a BCC that I'm sure is gravid. This is a Suriname. Let's take a look at her. So she's basically just been hanging around in a coil above the hot spot the last couple weeks. Uh, she's looking pretty thick. I don't want to disturb her. You can't really see her posterior end, but she is quite round in the torso of her tail. And this is a first time breeder. This girl is about six years old. She was born here back in 2014. Um, just gonna let her be. She's uh, probably about five, five and a half feet. She's a little girl and slow grown. Some of you guys have asked about how small she is. Um, but you know, I've this is a pretty typical size for a adult, a young adult Suriname, given you know a slow grown feeding regimen, and uh, she looks quite mature and. Um, Fingers crossed on a nice litter of babies. These guys I'm expecting probably sometime in August. So it'll be a couple months to wait. So I have just one pair that's still together for 2020. And that's my Longicata, my long tail boas. Take a quick look at them. So you can see both the male and the female there. And this is actually pretty late to have a pair still together because we're coming up on late June here. Uh, I did observe some activity between these two over the last few weeks. They were definitely tail to tail on a number of occasions. And I observed the male's tail up in the air, kind of wiggling slowly, which is a pretty sure sign that, you know, there's some action going on there. Hopefully making some nice uh, baby longicata. You can see the female is opaque now. Her eye is cloudy and she's going to shed. So hopefully this is finally the post-ovulation shed. I didn't see any obvious signs of ovulation, like, you know, swelling of her body or anything like that. But I often don't see the signs. You know, sometimes it's very subtle and I miss it. And I kind of give my boas free space to do their own thing. I don't constantly check on them. 
So hopefully this will finally be the post ovulation shed since she said several shed cycles already that I was hopeful about. If it doesn't happen this time, I think that's going to be it for the year. And I'll have to, you know, try again next year. Sometimes it just doesn't work out, but hopefully she'll start to act rabid after she sheds. Um, post ovulation shed is typically a little bit longer than a normal shed cycle, something like 10 days. And she's been opaque the last maybe three days. So we'll see how long this takes and if she starts acting rabid. But uh, stay tuned for future updates. I'll let you know how this uh, pairing is going. Here's a BCC that is uh, one of my most anticipated pairings for 2020. That's my Pacalpa Peru red tail boa. And so the female is definitely looking real rabid now. She's really thick. You know, you can see how swollen up her posterior half is. Definitely looking gravid. Hopefully she's not full of slugs, you know. A couple of years ago I paired this one up and it was actually a different male and she didn't look nearly as gravid back then, but when she gave birth she just passed some gelatinous slug-like material. They weren't even really well-formed slugs. So I don't know what happened, if it was her or the male or what. But hopefully the male uh, this year is a different male and hopefully he got the job done. Certainly looks promising so far. And she really doesn't move much. She just lies over the hot spot, coiled up. Um, be really great if I had some baby Pocalpa Peruvians. It's you know one of the most highly esteemed localities of Boa that you can get. And um, just uh, love these animals, beautiful golden colors. This one I anticipate if she does give birth, it'll be in sometime around August. So we still have a couple months to wait, but hopefully it'll go kind of fast. Great to see if I get any babies from this one, Bacaba Peruvian female. Another female that's looking really gravid now is my Kralki Dwarf Boa female. She's under the cork bark there. Let me grab that out of the way. So, not the best lighting, but you can see she's looking really thick right now. Look how thick she looks. Yeah, and she's been forming a pretty tight coil for the last couple months. Moving on and off from the heat spot. She's actually on the cooler side, but it's been pretty toasty lately. So, um, but she definitely looks gravid. She had a litter of, I believe it was around 15 babies back in 2017. And that was actually her third litter. She had a couple litters before I acquired her. This girl is about 15 years old. She's quite large for a crawl. She's about five, five and a half feet long. Just a beautiful animal. And I expect that she will probably be due sometime in late July or early August. So fingers crossed on this one. So I've got one more BCC that I'm unfortunately not as hopeful about. That's my Tomata my Venezuela pairing. And so female, hasn't really been acting gravid. You can see she's kind of up and looking around now. Um, she also hasn't been lying over her hot spot consistently, although she has been somewhat coiling. And, you know, I've seen her coil sometimes over the hot spot, sometimes on the cooler side. You know, her temperature has been reading anywhere from about 84 to about 88. Typically when they're gravid, they just lie on the hot spot and they stay about 88. She looks a little bit thick, not like huge, like my other, some of my other gravid females, you know, thicker than normal, um, which might be something, you know, maybe she just has a small litter. This is her first time breeding and she's a small animal to begin with. Even if it was a small litter, just a few babies, that would still be really wonderful as this is a really rare locality and it would be great just to have even a few of these beautiful tomato of Venezuela boas. 
if she does uh, have some babies it's going to be probably august so a little bit of a wait but i'll just have to see how she's acting although to be honest i'm really not very confident i'm going to have any venezuela bcc this year one more pairing that i'm really not that sure about is my pearl island boa boa constrictor saboge let's take a quick quick look at the female so there she is she's kind of coiled above the hot spot now she's been kind of moving back and forth um, she looks a little bit thicker than normal I know that uh, she does have a litter it's probably going to be a small litter my other pearl gave birth to five babies last year and you know now that I think about it she didn't really look all that gravid either so this one hopefully is gravid um, just have to see the other one actually gave birth last year in June, the end of June. So I think it was uh, around June 20th. So that date is gone by now, but uh, maybe she'll just be a little later if we get something. But um, she may not be gravid, in which case we'll have to try again next year with her. But I'll just keep monitoring her and see how things go. And hopefully we'll have at least a handful of these beautiful Pearl Island Boa babies by the end of the summer. So you may have noticed I didn't show you my Tar Humara female that I paired up. I'm pretty sure that she's not gravid at this point. So she's just not acting gravid and she isn't showing any swelling or anything like that. Pretty sure that for whatever reason she's just not going to have babies this year. So the male that I paired her up with has had four litters before including the last three years straight. So I'm not exactly sure what happened. Maybe he just needed a year off. But hopefully next year we'll have some nice Tower Humara uh, Mountain Boa babies. And I wanted to end just by showing you this Peruvian. This is the sire of the litter that I hope to be born, maybe in August. This is a uh, F1. This guy was born here back in 2015. F1 Pucapa uh, Peruvian. I always liked this guy. He really stood out from the rest of the litter just because of his peak saddles, you know, which you don't see too often in Peruvians. And he was also very large at birth. He was about uh, two feet long at birth. So he's always been on the large side. Um, he's probably about six feet right now. But just a really cool boa, beautiful markings, uh, built like a tank, very muscular, definitely. And he's actually gotten a little bit darker as he's grown up. He's got a lot of this beautiful dark black speckling, but just a you know, stunning animal to look at. So fingers crossed that I'll have some babies from this guy in another few months. It would be great, certainly great to have uh, some baby Pacaba Peruvian boas. So some of you guys have expressed interest in possibly acquiring one of my babies. So I just wanted to say a little bit about how that would work. So the babies are, they go up for sale once they're established and ready to go, which is typically about one to two months uh, after they're born. You know, they have to be feeding and, you know, I've gone through a couple of shed cycles and I just want to make sure they're perfectly healthy before I ship them out to you. I don't do deposits or waiting lists. Uh, it's uh, first come, first serve once the animals are ready to go. Um, usually I list on the, some of the online classifieds, typically on fauna classifieds, although I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to list the babies this year, but I'll keep you posted in regular updates uh, on these in these videos, so you know, please stay tuned. Um, I, unfortunately, I can't even guarantee you that the animals that I think are gravid are going to lead to successful litter, so sometimes they can be all slugs or Something might not go okay, so uh, fingers crossed I'm going to have some beautiful babies, but unfortunately with breeding boas, there's never any guarantee. It's just, you know, the uncertainty is just part of the whole process. So we'll just have to wait and see uh, how lucky I am this year. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your boas.